Alright, so I want to talk about the little start and select buttons that are on video game controllers, as this is an extremely important topic in the realm of video game preservation. I mean, if I don't talk about these buttons, they very well may be forgotten to the sands of time. For two out of the big three in the console manufacturing space, the start and select buttons are nearly something that we can consider retro. That's how long it's been since we've had a new console release with these two buttons on the controller. But, of course, you know the Wii U had to step up and keep the legacy going, which I don't know if that should be considered a compliment or not, honestly. Where is the tradition in our society? Have we become arrogant and forgotten our roots from which we've originated from? We can't even access the holy text without the start button for crying out loud. Okay, but seriously, I want to take a quick look at these two buttons and their rise and fall in video gaming because... At one point, not even that long ago, it was almost impossible to imagine a video game controller without the start and select buttons on it. Now, to an extent, it's not like these buttons really went anywhere. All modern controllers still have the two smaller middle buttons. They just have been renamed and sometimes even repurposed. And video game controllers having smaller function buttons is nothing new at all. Going all the way back to what is commonly considered the first at-home video game console, the Magnavox Odyssey, it had a controller with a reset button in the middle. And from what I can find, the first start button on a controller was not too long after with the Atari Home Pong consoles controller having a button labeled Push Start Game. Which this label might just be the worst grammar to ever be printed on any piece of video game hardware. And to that, I applaud you Atari. Good job. It would not be until the Nintendo Entertainment System that the start and select buttons that we know of today would be introduced and made iconic. It was rare to start up a game on the NES that did not require you to at least press one of these buttons just to start, usually the start button, duh. And while it is pretty standard of NES games to require you to select a game mode with the select button and start the game with the start button, some games had these buttons be used in the actual gameplay. In The Legend of Zelda, the start button brought up the item screen and the select button acted more as a hard pause for the game. Kirby's Adventure uses the select button to exhale enemy abilities, and even Tetris had a use for the select button and pressing it would hide the next block. Significantly more games implemented use of the start button, mostly using it as a hard pause for the gameplay or to bring up a menu, but these two simple buttons introduced on the NES controller would soon become a mainstay staple for nearly every video game controller to follow, and like mentioned earlier, are basically still around in some form or function today even in the newest console generations. Both the original PlayStation and Xbox consoles launched with controllers fashioned with these two face buttons. With the PlayStation, it was a triangle start button and a square select button. And for Xbox, there was a start button and a back button. Why back and not select? I could not tell you. Nintendo did go rogue after the Super Nintendo Entertainment System and only had a start button on the Nintendo 64 and Game Boy controllers, but let's not forget the Virtual Boy still had the select button a year before the Nintendo 64 ditched it. When, now that I kind of give it a little bit of thought... Oh, <gasps> that's it! That's what made the Nintendo 64 successful over the Virtual Boy! It was getting rid of the select button! It all makes sense now! Actually, Nintendo's history with these buttons is quite interesting. They were the first to really popularize having menu face buttons on a controller, and then they really only put them on three consoles, and one of those was the Virtual Boy, so realistically only two consoles. After that, they abandoned the select button for two more consoles. The Wii controller is all sorts of different and weird, but it did bring back some normalcy with the plus and minus buttons, which Later on, on the Wii U tablet, are somewhat confirmed to be named the start and select buttons, but honestly, this is where Nintendo just decided to start going with the plus and minus buttons, all the way up even to their newest console, the Nintendo Switch. Now, the start and select did live on with the Game Boy line and the Nintendo DS line of consoles, so there's that, I guess. The PlayStation and the Xbox have almost the exact same history with these buttons, being that they started with the two labeled as start and either select or back, and then eventually with the launch of the 8th console generation, the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One controllers changed them to better fit the modern gaming scene. Sony renamed the start to options and select to share. They also moved the function of the select button to press down on the touchpad, 
which I actually enjoy because I think it makes it much easier and natural for gameplay since it's such a large area to press. Microsoft similarly changed the names of their Start and Select button with the Start button being three lines and the Back button being two squares. I remember people were legitimately upset when it was revealed that the PS4 and the Xbox One were not going to have Start and Select buttons, myself included, but honestly it's not like these buttons are missing or even gone at all. Put an original PlayStation controller next to heck, even the PS5's DualSense and it's pretty much the same controller just with much more bells and whistles, and wouldn't you believe it, there's a start and select buttons. There's just three lines and, well, three lines again, but different. So yeah, while we might not have start and select buttons anymore, their influence and legacy on the design of video game controllers is not forgotten, far from it. We have to just move on from the more arcadey design of video games to where it made most sense to have them labeled as start and select. Now, you don't need a select button to select the game mode of a game, you just use the d-pad or the joystick and select it off of a menu GUI, which means that the original place of a select button can now be changed to a share button. Which, while I don't personally use much, if ever, is a much better use of a face button on a controller in the ever-growing online world of sharing things to the internet and social media. Maybe change is good. Maybe we can live in a world where the newest consoles don't have controllers with start and select. Maybe this is what's right for gaming. Just kidding, the start and select buttons live on in the Nintendo Switch Online NES Joy-Cons. These are official Joy-Cons according to Nintendo, and thus the 20 year count towards being retro resets. Take that, innovation.